Hi. In this video, we will have a look at some of the sententiae from Chapter 2 of Wheelock's Latin. You may notice that he now labels them sententiae antiquae and cites the author from which he has adapted these sentences. Anyway, moving on to the first sentence. Sawe o patria. Well, first things first, do you remember what sawe means from Chapter 1? Hit pause and go look at the vocab on page 6 if you don't remember. Now the question is, what case is patria in? I think we can translate this sentence pretty easily now. It's something along the lines of, hello home. But we should keep the grammar in mind. I'll give you a hint. It's not nominative. Pause and think of it for a moment if you like. It's vocative. This O is the big hint. Now it looks just like the nominative. But still, this O, it's an address saying, hello, well, here, greetings. Maybe hello home is a little too informal here. Greetings, O oh fatherland, if we want to put it that way. And that's vocative. Looks just like the nominative, but nevertheless, we should keep the grammar in mind. It's vocative. So I will uh, leave number two for you to figure out. Of course, we can talk about it in our conferencing session. Now for number three. Da veniam puelai amabote. So we have two verbs here, one before the comma and one after it. Let's think about after the comma first, this stuff here, amabote. If you remember from the last chapter, this is an idiomatic phrase. If you have to go look up the vocab on page 6 from the chapter, uh, previous chapter, go ahead and remind yourself what the idiom means. It means please. We can have it before or later. Well, let's start off with it. Please. Comma. So let's now move on to the first part of the sentence. Can you identify the verb? This might be a little tricky, but wania is clearly a noun. It's, it's glossed right there as favor or pardon. Puela is also a noun, so the verb must be da. Again, if you need to go back and look at the vocab in the first chapter, ask yourself, what verbs do we have there that start with d? Well, there's debio debere and do dare. Of course, it must be dare, the verb dare. You might not guess that based on the first person form, which is, of course, do, do dare, but we need to look at the infinitive form here. Also, if you recall, the way to form the imperative is to just chop off the ending. So, da, and that's a command, give. Now let's think about the nouns. We have the command, give. So please give. Give what to whom? The what will be in the accusative. Which one is that? Well, that's pretty clearly waniam. The m is a dead giveaway that it's accusative. The to whom will be in the dative. That, of course, is puelai. So, give pardon, give pardon or favor. Please give pardon or favor to the girl. There we go. So, moving on. I'll leave four and five for you to figure out, and let's look at number six. Number six has a number of moving parts. So, let's look at this one. It might be a little intimidating at first glance, but if we go about this systematically, you'll see it's not so hard. Fortunam et vitam antiquae patriae saipae, saipe laudes sed recusas. First things first, verbs. Here we have two of them. Where are they? Take a second and pause the video if you want to figure it out. Well, it's laudas and recusas. Laudare, we already know this one. This is pretty clear. We know that one pretty well to praise. Recusare is glossed for us. To refuse or reject. So now, let's look at the endings. Again, if you have to go, have to pause and go look at the chart, go ahead and do that. Now, if you're back, you know this is a second person singular. You. So, you praise... You reject. These are connected by said, the conjunction but. So you praise, but you reject. Now we have to ask ourselves, what do you praise but reject? What's in the accusative? Again, we have two words connected by a conjunction. This time, it's et. Fortunam et vitam. And again, these M's, dead giveaways that it's accusative. So, you praise but reject the fortune, oh, we can include the the here, the fortune and 
we could translate vitam as life or way of life. Let's go with way of life. You praise but reject the fortune and way of life. Now what we have left over is antiquae patriae saipe. Saipe, that's an adverb. So we can just tack that onto the verbs. So we can put it this way. You often praise but you reject the fortune and way of life and now we have antiquae patriae. This is one of those confusing forms. These could be plural nominative, genitive singular, or dative singular. Well, we can eliminate plural nominative because there's no verb here that's plural. So what about genitive singular? Let's take that for a ride. You often praise but reject the fortune and way of life of the ancient fatherland. Does that make sense? Is that a uh, a, a sensible translation seems okay to me but just for kicks let's try dative too you often praise but you reject the fortune and way of life to the ancient fatherland does that make sense eh not really so I think the translation we have here with the genitive singular is the best you often praise but you reject the fortune and way of life of the ancient fatherland in other words you're a poser dude moving on number seven and eight. I want to take these two together. They aren't especially hard, but there's maybe one thing to look out for. With number seven, let's start there. Where's the verb? Person, number, well, here's the verb, you base. It's glossed, so it's you command or you order. Who's getting this command? Well, me. You command me. And then we have another verb, Vitare. We've seen this before. It's a complementary infinitive. You just tack it onto the first verb. You command me to avoid. Command me to avoid what? Tuabam. The crowd. Again, this M there, dead giveaway that's the accusative, so you command me to avoid the crowd. Now on to number eight. Before we get to the verb, I'll point out that we also have the object, me, here. But as always, we really ought to start with the verb. Where is it? If you're having trouble with it, look back to sentence number three and remind yourself about the verb dare. So we have, I give me. That sounds a little funny, but for now, let's go with it. What do we do with philosophiae? Remember, this could be genitive singular, dative singular, or nominative plural, just based on the form it's in. So we can try out the various options. If it's genitive, I give me of philosophy. That's no good. What about plural nominative? Philosophies, I give me, well, that's also no good. So let's try the dative. I give me to philosophy. That makes sense. Now, I give me to, the, to philosophy, that still sounds a little funny. That's because we don't quite know what to do with me yet. That's a reflexive. We haven't learned these, but we'll get to them a bit later. In any case, it's best to say myself here. I give myself to philosophy. Now, let's skip 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and go on to number 13. You can look at the other ones on your own, and we'll talk about those in conference. Number 13 isn't difficult. The verb here is est. The noun and adjective are pretty straightforward, too. No avarice is oops no avarice is well is what what does sine mean without means without so and now poena well that's punishment now here's a question what case is poena in how do we know it's ablative, and the reason we know that is that it comes right after sine. Sine, the preposition, always takes ablative. So Wheelock would put a macron over this A. I haven't included it here, or any of the diacritical marks here, because first off, I'm lazy, and second off, those marks don't really exist in real Latin. It's just there to help you with the ablative in the textbook. But this ablative is easy, because we have sine here. No avarice is without punishment. But number 14, this ablative isn't so easy. But before we get to that ablative, let's find the verb. It's glossed. Onerat. Oppress. 
This is the third person singular. Do we have an explicit subject? It can't be may, because, again, that would be caveman talk. And cybus catenus, that's definitely not nominative. So we have to assume that whatever is oppressing or, or, uh, or loading on, that's, uh, it's he, she, or it. We don't know which one. We, let's just go with he. So he oppresses me. Now what do we do with Siwis Catenus? Well, the, both the words are glossed. We have cruel and we have chain. Chain being catena. And by the way, if you have any trouble remembering this word, what catena means, just think of a an ancient Roman, or actually a late antique Roman figure named Paulus Catena, Paul the Chain. He was a government agent well known for chaining people and dragging them through the streets. He had kind of a bad reputation, so he got this creepy nickname, Paulus Catena. Anyway, but what case, are, these, these two seem to agree, right? They both have an IS ending. So what case are these two in? This is the adjective, sawes, and this is the, the noun. Just looking at the form, these could be dative plural or, or ablative plural. So let's try the dative. He oppresses me two cruel chains or four cruel chains. Ah, uh, not so good. What if it's ablative? What kind of ablative would it be? Well, this here is an ablative of instrument. He oppresses me with cruel chains. That is, by the instrument of cruel chains. I'll leave the number 15 for you, but just a hint. It's got nothing to do with Pat Sajak. Now, on to number 16. Some of the English to Latin translations. Number 16 isn't so bad. So we'll start there. In fact, let's deviate from the usual pattern and look at the subject first instead of the verb. The girls. What's the plural nominative of puela? Well, we know girl is puela. So how do we make that plural nominative, the girls, save the poet's life? Just add e, puelai. What verb would we need for save? If you need to look into the English Latin glossary, pause the video and go ahead. Well, here you could use servare or conservare. So far we have puelai conservant this of course being the third person plural ending. So what do these girls save? They save the life, vita. But this has to be in the accusative. So we need to put it in the accusative, in the singular, so vitam. Puelai conservant vitam. Now how do we make it the life of the poet? Now we need the genitive. So the genitive singular of poeta is Poetai. Thus, puelai concer want vitam poetai. As always, you can rearrange these words in most any way you want like. You could have vitam poetai concer want puelai. All means the same thing because word order is not that important in Latin. So number 17, then I'll leave the rest for you. We have two verbs here, go astray and pay the penalty. I'm treating pay the penalty as the whole verb because it's an idiom. Do you remember seeing this idiom before? Wheelock talks about it at one point at least. Dare poenas. And then also the verb arare. So dare poenas, that's that there. Then we also have the verb errare. So we need the third person plural for these because it's we do this, right? So that's pretty easy. Pay the penalty, if you remember, is dare poenis. So damus, just to remind you, you chop off the ending and you add the third person plural. Arare, get rid of that. Mus. So we have damus et, oh wait, damus poenas, excuse me, pay the penalty. Et eramus. Damus et aramus. Let's fill in the rest now. Often is easy. Saipe. So, damus et aramus. Let's put it up front here just for the heck of it. Saipe, damus et aramus. 
Damus Poenas et Ramus, now without philosophy. Without, if you remember, is easy, it's sine. And now I need to ask, after sine, what case will this noun, philosophia, be in? Pause and think for a moment if you need to. But it will be ablative, because sine always takes uh, ablative. So we can put a little macron over that to remind us that that's ablative. So saipe damus poenas et eramus sine philosophia. So that's the sententia for chapter 2. Translate the rest on your own and ask any questions you might have about them in our conference or send me an email. See you then.